there and welcome to day 20. Now yesterday I talked to you about the number one priority for your blog and that is to put people onto your email list so that you have the ability to mobilize their attention. It doesn't, it's not only about selling things, it's also being able to bring them back into your own site. And you're not really building up anything, no asset, no leverage, unless you're putting them onto an email list. So obviously the next step of that is opt-in forms on your blog. And today I want to talk to you briefly about where to put them. Now an opt-in form, obviously enter an email or sometimes a name and email, hit submit, get onto your list. Pretty cut and dry. Now the one question that some people have is do you need to have an opt-in bribe or not? Now, preferably you would. Now, a lot of people give out eBooks, and I have as well. Um, and in some markets, the eBook is a little bit played out. In fact, I think that the the market that I'm in, the eBook is a little bit played out because pretty much everybody is offering eBooks. So, the, one of the reasons why I'm actually creating this challenge is to replace uh, my, the eBook that I'm giving away now. So now they're going to get a 30-day tr video training course. And I think that's a pretty good opt-in bribe. However, um, you don't necessarily need an opt-in bribe. Sometimes it could be as simple as just free updates. You know, get updated. You know, from the blog. You know, and that type of thing can work. And with Aweber, which is my preferred email provider, you can actually have a, a blog broadcast set up. So whenever you um, post something, it emails the post to them. So basically, just like FeedBurner, except that you have the ability to use that list manually and not only based on your RSS feed. So the next step is where do you put the opt-in forms on your site? So let's go over to my screen and let me show you a few of the best places to put the forms on your site. Okay, a very good place to do this is at the top and above the fold. Now, if you're not familiar with that phrase, above the fold, all that means is the chunk of the page that you can see without having to scroll. Very simple. Now, this is especially true on the home page. I like having a resource feature box type of thing on the home page of a blog that actually is designed to get them onto my email list. And if you go to davidrisley.com, you will see that that actually is indeed the case. And I think this is actually a pretty good performing area to have an opt-in form. Now, another one is the top of your sidebar. And I definitely recommend that you have an opt-in form at the top of your sidebar. Whether the sidebar is on the left side or the right side, you want to have an opt-in box right there. Now, another great place to have an opt-in form placement is directly below your content. We've talked about this one before when it comes to having a call to action, but you know, getting onto a list is a call to action, so it makes a lot of sense. So what we're meaning here is it basically looks like it's almost part of your blog post, but right at the, the tail end of it, but before the comments actually begin. The whole idea here is that it is a stop point yeah, as the person reads the page, they go down to the bottom and then they're going to be left with something to do. And that's why you're giving them a call to action there. Now, the next one is an in-content stop point. Now, again, to clarify what I mean by stop point, it's if you look at your site as the eyeballs flowing around and your attention flowing around the page, the stop point is going to be the natural resting places where the eye kind of tends to stop and focus on whatever is there. So an in-content stop point would be places within your content where a person might naturally come to rest. One of the places for this would be on an about page. If you go through my about page formula, you'll notice that I've got a place for the elevator pitch and the benefits of reading. And then right underneath that is a stop point. And that's a good place for an opt-in form. Um, if you do any of the resource pages that I talked about in a prior day of this challenge, there's usually a great stop point right within that thing and definitely at the bottom of it. So good opt-in form placement. Lastly is the footer. A lot of people tend to overlook the footer, but at the very at the footer, you know, at the very bottom of the page is a stop point because there are people that tend to scroll all the way down to the bottom and then you want to make sure they've got something down there to do. So that's a natural opt-in form placement right there. And if you go to davidrosie.com, you'll notice that I have an opt-in in my footer. So those are the best performing places that in my experience to have an opt-in form. Now what I recommend that you do is go to your site right now and see if you have an opt-in form 
in any of those places or all of those places. If you go to davidrizzi.com, you're going to find that I have an opt-in form basically in all of those places. Um, you can have multiple opt-in forms on a site. You don't need to have just one. Now, uh, if there's a technical thing for this, because I know some people, they don't really know how to place opt-in forms in some of these spots, then um, one thing I would recommend is that you do consider hiring somebody to do it. It is not expensive necessarily. In fact, you can go and check out Fiverr.com and pay people to do these things for you for $5. So I'm pretty sure you can probably afford to spend 5 bucks. Um, the opt-in form doesn't need to be super fancy. It just needs to be there and not, not look absolutely horrible, but just it needs to be there because these are the places where people are going to naturally opt in. So if it makes sense to opt in, have the opt-in form in that spot, and you're going to find that you get people onto your list. Okay, I will see you tomorrow.